Marcus Ewing, DJs and Entertainment, man about entertainment. Uh, please tell me, uh, how did you first come into the entertainment industry? I first came in the entertainment industry, actually, when I used to record eight track tapes wow. for my uncles and aunties. I started at the age of four years old. Wow. What so, about what year was that? Uh, tell you what year was that, you're really going to expose me. <laughs> All right, before year, the 70s. Yeah, 1970. Okay, we'll 1970, 71 okay. is when I started getting into the entertainment thing, making uh, eight, track cassette, eight track tapes for my uncles and aunties. Uh -huh. Started that way, and then my actual first taste of actual promoting as entertainment, 17, when I did my first house party. Wow. That was 17, 1983. Really, you remember where it was? Yeah, 4220 Wayne, my mama's house. <laughs> <laughs> so you started in as a DJ? Yes, I did. That's cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Now, now from there, where did you go? You got into doing, I remember the name on the radio, promotions, etc., etc. Did you have a DJ tag or a name? Never had a DJ tag. When I first started doing the house parties, I was DJing, I was doing promotions, I was doing security. I was doing the advertise, I was doing everything. Wow. So in 19, go up a few years, gotcha. 19, say 80s, late 87, 88, mm -hmm. when I started dealing with my brother from another mother, DJ Fresh, gotcha. and a guy named George Lewis. George was actually the guy who used to book the events at different places to party at. Huh. DJ Fresh became the DJ, and I became the silent investor. Gotcha. So took the load off of it, but I was still doing security as well. Right, right, right. Okay, so that's how I got off. Blasting that. from the past. Man, the promotion. How did you get into doing parties and some of the famous things? Because you definitely was on the radio. Remember your name, Marcus Ewing, no doubt. Talk yeah. about that. Well, I got to doing parties is when uh, George Lewis kind of like instant happened to him where he got shot. Mm -hmm. So he stopped, wasn't being able to built the places for Fresh to do the parties. So I stepped in and started doing parties myself once again, because Fresh had teamed up with Jeff Atkins. Right. So I intertwined with Junior Ren, DJ Junior Ren, yep. became my DJ. Mm -hmm. So I used to book different places and different hotels to do parties. Mm -hmm. And then I started collaborating with Robert Harris. May he rest in peace. Right. That's one of the greatest commercial radio for the radio guys ever existed. Wow. Man made some great radio commercials. Right. Then after Robert Harris, I started doing it myself. But how I got off into it, I was at a party at the Hart Banquet Hall one time. Mm -hmm. And instead of asking questions, I like to just sit back and just observe people. Right. So I'm observing Marcus Smith, D. Mustafa, mm -hmm. and Kevin Von Zell. <laughs> so I used to watch them, see how they did things. See how I was a young kid, did probably 12, 13, 14. Right. But I had uncles that was over to me, so I used to get in their parties with them. Right. And one night, Marcus Smith, dropped his bracelet at the Heart Banquet Hall. And when I tell you this bracelet had so many diamonds in it, <laughs> it was ridiculous. So I picked it up. Right. And I just stood there at the door thing, cause I, I was waiting to come in, it was at the door. Right. And when he came back, I said, hey man, you dropped your bracelet. <laughs> Marcus turned around and looked at me, he grabbed me, he took me to the mic thing, he turned the music off, wow. he said, hey, this is my namesake. <laughs> His name is Marcus like mine. This man just found my $10,000 bracelet wow. and gave it back to me. Wow. Said this man gets in my parties forever, wow. for life. Wow. And he just took me around the party thing. Then started asking me things. I told him I wanted to get off in the party. And mm -hmm. he gave me some little bits and snips about how to get into it. Wow. And I took off from there. Man, I had like about a six, seven year run at different hotels. Mm -hmm. but my main spot was the party house gotcha. at, with Tony DePardo. Okay. And how I got good with that, my grandmother, Maynell Dunn and my mother, Miss Cheryl Dean, not well, I'm no longer here, right? May they rest in, rest in peace. Mm. They were, uh, used to work for Tony Pardo doing the bingo wow. at the party house. <laughs> so when he found out I was the son and the grandson and he loved them so much, he had to make ice get the party house man for no money. Wow. Woo, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Now, what <laughs> years was this that you would do the party house? The party house, nice. party house, I did the party house from like 89 to 90 to 91. Gotcha. Well, 88 to 91. Uh -huh. And I was doing the party house every weekend yes, you was. all year round <laughs> yes, was, i definitely remember definitely on the right. party house. Share as far right. as you know promotion and things you was doing around the city yeah a lot of people don't know that uh the group used to be called talent mm -hmm. used to be called heat okay the members were uh meek which is marlon harris bishop which is er ernest ernest dixon and casino which is keith morrell uh -huh. i'm the one who actually introduced them to Jermaine Dupree. Wow. When they got signed with Social Death. Wow. And I also did security with them when they got on there. A few other people I introduced to the music game by different things. Uh, 
what's his name? Chris. Mm. That scenes with uh Tech Nine. Got you. Yep, Chris Guy. Yeah, yeah, Chris Guy uh -huh. I introduced Chris to Chico DeBarge. Wow. Before he got to singing doing that. Uh -huh. But like you say, I don't ask for nothing. Right, right, you right. You ask me for a favor, I'm just gonna put you in a position that your talent got to speak for it. No doubt. But when people some people make it they tend to forget about the little thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I don't ask for nothing. But right. just every now and say, right. just Mark, say thank, say thank you. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's just been a few other people that I've introduced to the game. You know what I'm saying? That's been doing their thing. But like say now, I got a guy named Alvino McFall, brother up in Wichita, Kansas. A real good brother with me. My cousin in Nebraska. Well, every now and then I do a little silent investing with them on the shows and adventures they do. Okay. As part of my for lovers and others entertainment as well. Okay. Now with that, what about security? How did, what was your first, how did you get into uh, security? That's a funny question. <laughs> my first thing in security, like I say, I was backstage at a New Edition concert, mm -hmm. living another life. Gotcha. Bobby's camp people came to me looking for certain things. Right. I went and got it for them. Right. They like, man, we're going to St. Louis, such, such, such. can you follow <laughs> us on right. the road with it? I got you. Right. You know what I'm saying? They like, we'll give you extra of what we're getting. Gotcha. And we make sure you got your own room and everything. No problem. Right. So I that's how I traveled them. LL, I had uh, certain videos gotcha. of extracurricular activities with women. Right. That I used to have. Right. And we was on LL's bus watching them one time. <laughs> and the individual in there, they wanted to meet. So when I brought her down to meet her, they met her by LL was like, okay. Can you, and was, I had just had my son, this one here, uh -huh. that's 1989. Wow. And me and Ella hadn't had any kids yet, right. but his wife, his girlfriend, Simone, was pregnant at the time, right. so he asked me about the fatherhood thing, right. the birth, and we, like I say, talking like we've been knowing each other for years. Wow. So that morning, he asked me, well, man, we going to St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, mm -hmm. Minnesota, would you like to go? Right. He said, I can't put you on the bus, come forward, but if you can get there, everything else is already paid for. Wow. So I went to all of them places with him. And when I got there, my job was security, slash, 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 go out to all this, get the women, bring them back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> You, that was a good gopher job right there. That was a good gopher job. That was a good gopher job. How can one get into a gopher position like that? Be in the right place at the right time uh, and know the right you people. Did share a few moments that stand out to you? Yes, I do. When I started my own entertainment company, as you can see, mm -hmm. For Lovers and Others Beautiful. is the name of my company. Got you. Let's do a wide eye on that. There we go. Yeah, we for own it. And company, we'll, for we'll, Lovers and Others, the okay. B-Side Guru. Okay. Oh, wow. Got you. Yeah, we zoomed in on that. That's what I've known that. Okay. And then some of my biggest accomplishments was meeting and uh, promoting and doing concerts with uh, Biz Markey. Okay. And uh, I went on tour, actually, in uh, 88, 89 with uh, LL yeah. Cool J. Wow. And that's when I met N.W.A. <laughs> a lot of folks don't know, but I was telling them, the movie N.W.A., their movie. Right. That scene where in Detroit, where the police ran them off stage rest. For the movie, they did it like that. Right. I'm here to tell you the actual way it happened. <laughs> we were at this show. The police, they had the meeting earlier that day, had asked him not to do the song. Gotcha. So easy them agreed not to do the song after the police. Right. So toward the, when they came on show, probably their third song, Ice Cube looked at Dr. Dre and was like, yo man, can't nobody tell us what to do. Drop that beat. Right. And when Dre dropped it, Ice Cube got the ring and sang in the first verse. Right. And about four or five hundred guys had on black jackets. Wow. They threw your ladies on stage and made a big boom noise. So we all took out running. Cause right. I didn't know whether it was. We in Detroit. Right, right, right. At that time, Detroit was number one in our size. Right, right. So as we run it, we run back to the hotel. Mm -hmm. The police and everybody, they started taking their jackets off. Then you see the badges, you see the guns. <laughs> so they arrested Dre, Ren, Dre Ren, uh, Yellow, Laylaw, and a whole bunch of other ones. Wow. Easy hadn't came to the venue yet. Right. So at the hotel, Easy come down, asked what's going on, what's happening. Everybody telling him that they just took him to jail. Right. So Easy just shook his head and said, that damn cube. <laughs> <laughs> So Easy went upstairs, true right. story, right. got a briefcase, uh -huh. came downstairs and said, somebody take me to the police station, <laughs> let me go get my boys out of jail. <laughs> 30 minutes later, wow. they yeah. was back. Wow. So that and being on tour with LL is 
Well, I can say my biggest accomplishment that right off the bat, as well as also tour, I used to tour with New Edition as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's what, doing security? Yeah, doing security. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So how was it to tour with New Edition? Uh, well, as far, I know the ladies was all over that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one story about that, right? When people say that uh, women to do anything to meet somebody. Right. I used to have mothers on everything. Wow. Come to me and would bring me their daughters. And the wow. mothers used to say, they'll do any and everything to get their daughters backstage to meet them. Wow. It was crazy. No but go back to the biz, crazy. like I told you before, me and the biz is like this. Right. Biz is the godfather to my uh, youngest daughter. She's wow. 20 now. And biz uh, on his album, The Diabolical Biz Market Never Sleeps. Uh -huh. Got me in on the credits. Yes. He got yes. me a shout out. And he has a song on there. It's song number 13. It's called Things Get a Little Easier. That's the song he dedicated out to me. Wow. And me and the biz to this day keep in touch. I'm praying for him, brother. Everybody pray for the biz. Okay. He ain't dead from what the tabloids have been saying. Right. He's doing good, he's just in rehab right now. Gotcha. He's trying to get everything back. He gotcha. had a bad situation and he's good. He's still living, okay. he's just in rehab. Just Mr. Marcus Ewing, I know you don't see him right now because we have a lovely picture of two lovely ladies, but he's definitely in the picture. Talk about this picture. That picture right there is the group, the JS Girls. Okay. Those of you might not be familiar with them, they had a song called, uh, uh, what was the song? They had the Ice Cream Man, one of them, and a slow. They had a couple of slow cuts that they had that was real popular. They was founded and produced by R. Kelly. Okay. And a lot of people don't know the one in the hat named Candy. Uh, that is now Ron Isley's wife. Wow. Yeah, she's he very like fine. Him. Yeah, he like them young. So and you good. see the Isley Brothers in concert anytime recently, and uh, the lady that does the solo. Got you. That's her. Wow. Go figure, you did end up doing security for him. Right, exactly. All right, now <laughs> right next to it is you with another lady. Yeah, uh, that's the little lady that used to be with the Cheetah Girls and 3LW. Oh, yep, okay. She one looks very good. One on the very end. One on the very end. That's Michelle from our Destiny Shop. Right, okay, sure. As you can see, that picture there, uh, how close we are. Right. I'm just going to leave it at that. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, it's the Easy right. E, Eric Wright. Eric Wright, Easy E. Yeah. That's my buddy. No Rest in peace. Yes, yeah, for sure. Now I'm very tired. But I also have special guests on my Zoom show, as well as entertainers, big time promoters. Run the big time producers on there. Kansas City Zone, Lance Alexander from Low Key. Right. He's on there with me every night, yeah. giving his history of the music he's wrote and produced folks, as well as I play it. And one of Kansas City's prominent DJs from KPRS 103, Tony G. Right. Tony G is kind of like my tag team DJ. Nice. So we'll play different songs that people are like, man, who is that? Who's playing that? Right. We never let you know who's playing it. We just tell you who it is. You know what I mean? Who it right, is. Right. So then I got people that be calling in, different entertainers calling in, giving their insight when I play their songs. And I let the entertainers and the producers give the history of the song. Oh, wow. So the show, my intentions for it in 2021 is to make it a big, big, big podcast right. as well as an actual show. Right. Not to say I want to be like. Michael Basin, right. but if I can be equivalent to him, right, right, right. I'll be good. No doubt. So that's that's my goal. How can people get in touch with you as far as to get on the Zoom or check you out on Zoom? They can check my Facebook page. My okay. Facebook page is Marcus Guin, okay. G-U-E-I-N, and I've always post a link on there every night that I'm going to be on Zoom. The link stays the same because okay. it's a recurring meeting. Right, right, right. You know, if I had it to post to you right now, I would. Sorry, right, well, But just go on my Facebook on page, you can get the Zoom link, and I'm letting you know the nights that I come on and what time to join in on the live Zoom link or just live on my Facebook page. That's how like right. I say, I'll be on the night at 9 p.m. <laughs> I'll be on the night. Sunday night. At 8 p.m. I'll be on the night at 8 p.m. Yeah, okay. So Sunday. tune in. Sunday. So with that, uh, how can people get in contact? We see we can get you on Facebook, any other ways of contact? Yeah, I got an email. You can okay. give them an email, which is my last name, Guin, G-U-E-I-N-S-R at gmail.com. Once again, G-U-E-I-N-S-R at gmail.com. Or you can reach directly out to me. Phone number is 816-914-7349. Yes. All I can say is I'm truly blessed. Yes. Truly blessed to be able to be put in a position, first and foremost, to go see them people, right. to do what they were blessed to do, and then fortunate enough to be able to meet them. And then, like I say, me, I don't look at them as stars and right. entertainers. Right. I look at them as regular people, people. like me. Right. This is just what they was blessed to do. Right. And when you come and you talk to them, meet them like that, 
they'll become your friends. Right. Like, I'm on first name basis with a lot of them. Wow. A lot of them, I still have their phone numbers. Yeah, we right. communicate and we talk. Wow. That's just the relationship I became with them. And like I said, I just met them, treat them like people. We laugh, we joke. I mean, they look at me and be like, man, you gotta give me no man.